Hello, knowledge seekers. In this episode of 20 Minute Books, we delve into We Should All Be Feminists, a powerful manifesto by the award winning Nigerian author Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie. In this thought provoking essay, Adichie expands upon her critically acclaimed TEDx talk, offering a nuanced exploration of what feminism means in the 21st century. Through a blend of personal experience, poignant storytelling, and insightful analysis, she addresses the ingrained gender inequalities that permeate societies worldwide and articulates a compelling argument for why everyone should embrace feminist ideals. Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie is a distinguished voice in contemporary literature celebrated for her vibrant storytelling and insightful social commentary. A well-decorated writer, she has received the prestigious MacArthur Fellowship and both the Orange Prize for Half of a Yellow Sun and the National Book Critics Circle Award for Americana. Adichie's eloquent prose has captivated readers globally, making her one of the most influential feminists of our time. We Should All Be Feminists is a clarion call for action, inviting readers from all walks of life to engage with feminist discourse. Whether you are skeptical of feminism, a staunch advocate, or someone exploring the potential of this movement, to affect positive change in society, this book will provide a profound understanding of why the fight for gender equality is as urgent as ever. Join us as we reflect on how Chimamanda Ngozi Adichie's powerful words challenge us to confront our biases, question our cultural norms, and strive towards a just world where all individuals have the opportunity to thrive without discrimination. This episode is not just a summary, It's an invitation to join the conversation about equality, dignity, and the transformative power of feminism. We should all be feminists. Why feminism is the key to a better world. Introduction. Unmasking feminism. Why gender equality has not been fully achieved. In today's world, it's easy to fall into the comforting illusion that feminism has won its battles, that with the right to vote, work, and control over reproductive choices, the struggle for gender equality is a thing of the past. But beneath the surface of these significant accomplishments lies a persistent truth. We have not yet arrived at a society where men and women stand on truly equal ground. From the bustling streets of Lagos, to the corridors of Western corporations, the imprints of inequality are strategically woven into societal norms and attitudes, a powerful undercurrent that continues to shape the opportunities and experiences of women worldwide. By delving into the personal encounters with gender expectations, the narrative of we should all be feminists illuminates the subtle yet pervasive forces that uphold male privilege and stall the march toward true equality. Through this journey, the author entwines the intimate with the universal, offering insights into the widespread misinterpretations that cloud the concept of feminism, the cultural restrictions that curtail women's freedom, as seen in Nigerian nightlife, and a historical perspective on cultural beliefs, such as the once taboo perception of twins in certain societies. It's a sobering reminder that despite progress, the fabric of gender disparity remains tightly woven into the tapestry of our everyday lives. And it's an impassioned call, one that resonates with clarity and urgency. For why embracing feminism is essential for everyone, irrespective of gender, if we aspire to weave a new societal tapestry where equality and respect are the guiding principles. Part 1. Feminism. More than a word, it's misunderstood. Feminism often stirs up a cloud of dissent, misconception, and even outright disdain. But why does this term, aimed at advocating for equal rights, stir such potent reactions? We Should All Be Feminists dives into this perplexing phenomenon, revealing the layers of misunderstanding that surround the concept of feminism and the reasons it's often met with hostility. Picture a young woman, barely in her teens, engaged in a fervent exchange of ideas. 
At some point, the term feminist is hurled her way as if it were an accusation, suggesting that to be a feminist is to be on the wrong side of society, a sentiment she encountered time and time again throughout her life, whether it was being warned against adopting the label for fear it would mar her reputation, or hearing claims that feminism was an extravagance unsuitable for the African context, the misconceptions were relentless. These aren't isolated anecdotes. Across the board, the word feminism triggers a spectrum of responses, mostly rooted in a cocktail of myths, that feminists are bitter, man-hating individuals who have strayed from the path of femininity. But even among some proponents of gender equality, There's a belief that the battle has been won, that the scales are now balanced, and feminism is an artifact of a bygone era of disparity. This veil of equality was lifted for a male friend of the author when he experienced a subtle yet stark realization of gender bias. After dining out with the author and being the recipient of thanks for a tip that she had given, he caught a glimpse of the nuanced discrimination women face. It's moments like these, small yet cutting, that anchor the author's conviction in the continued relevance and necessity of feminism. Such insights peel back the layers to reveal a core truth. Despite progress, our understanding of feminism and the lived reality of many women worldwide remain at odds. We're reminded that merely acknowledging the need for equality isn't enough when societal reflexes are still tuned to the old, unequal tune. And as we confront this disparity, it becomes crystal clear that feminism is not merely a word or a historical footnote. It's a current, vital movement that demands action, understanding, and universal support. Part 2. Gender Inequality. A Persistent Challenge in the Modern Workplace. Though women have broken through legal barriers to enter politics and scale the ranks of various careers, a shadow of inequality still hangs over the workplace. This lingering prejudice goes beyond what the law can regulate. At its core is the notion of a glass ceiling, an invisible barrier that ensures the most coveted roles in organizations, along with the top salaries, predominantly go to men. Take fields traditionally associated with women, such as culinary arts, education, and creative disciplines. Even here, men are more likely to clinch the leadership roles, the head chef, the dean, the director. When a woman ascends to these heights, it's often touted as an anomaly, a rare crack in the glass ceiling rather than a sign of systematic change. The disparities extend across the spectrum of employment, evidenced by a 2014 finding Male workers were taking home 21% more income than their female counterparts for equivalent roles. This meant that for every dollar a man earned, a woman secured a mere 79 cents. Numbers such as these starkly outline a divide that's painfully quantifiable. But not all gender-based discrimination is as easy to measure as the income gap. Some of it thrives in the nuanced dynamics of workplace culture. Consider the story of a woman who, upon her promotion to a senior role, faced backlash for displaying the same authoritative demeanor that her male predecessor was acclaimed for. What was once commanding became problematic when reflected in a female leader. In another instance, a woman's innovative idea was dismissed in a meeting, only to be later praised when reiterated by a male colleague. These scenarios reveal a double standard, so ingrained that even identical actions or behaviors are read differently based on gender. Men's assertiveness and opinions are met with respect. Women's are frequently undervalued or labeled as aggressive. These vignettes from We Should All Be Feminists illuminate the insidious challenges that continue to confront women in the workplace, casting a glaring light on the biases that persist despite the semblance of equality. They remind us that dismantling the nuanced forms of sexism requires a robust, unabashed commitment to feminism, a commitment that questions, confronts, and reshapes the standards and expectations unfairly imposed upon women in their professional lives. Part 3. In society's eyes, the unfair trappings of being a woman. Beyond the confines of the office, women face a broader canvas of inequality painted by societal customs and attitudes. 
they are often relegated, implicitly or overtly, to a secondary status, deprived of the liberty to navigate life's crossroads on their own terms. Consider the societal lens through which a woman's life choices are scrutinized. If she chooses career advancement over starting a family, she's branded a deviation from the norm, particularly in communities where a woman's worth is pegged to motherhood. Within the familial setting, too, an expectation looms large for women to compromise their ambitions for the sake of child-rearing duties, a sacrifice rarely demanded of men. The realm of sexuality presents yet another battlefield. Cultures across the world idolize female virginity, heaping adjectives like innocent, pure, and angelic on women, as though their character hinges on their sexual history. Men, in stark contrast, often escape such scrutiny. Their dalliances may even be celebrated or enviously regarded. Societal prescriptions also dictate that women cultivate passivity and devotion to please men, a conditioning that begins early and follows women throughout their lives. This unspoken rule is so deeply ingrained that a woman in Nigeria who steps out to a club alone is not seen as someone simply seeking a night of dancing and fun, but rather as a prostitute. Instead of addressing the male perspectives that perpetuate prostitution, society points fingers at women, calling their choices irresponsible. The policing of women's bodies extends to their clothing choices. Dressing in figure-revealing attire becomes a dangerous provocation, where instances of sexual assault are insensitively justified with victim-blaming rhetoric. Women, they say, were asking for it by the way they dressed a narrative that grossly misplaces responsibility and reflects the unsettling belief that women's bodies are for male enjoyment and judgment. We Should All Be Feminists pulls back the curtain on these social afflictions that women weather, restrictions on their life choices, sexual double standards, the demand for subservience, and the objectification of their bodies. These issues are not individual but systemic underlining the urgent necessity for a feminist perspective. It's a perspective that not only critiques the status quo, but also aspires to reconstruct societal norms, so women no longer suffer due to their gender, but are celebrated and empowered to live according to their own aspirations and desires. Part 4. Recognizing Differences Without Upholding Disparities The debate over gender often stumbles upon the question of difference. Are men and women inherently distinct? And do these differences justify the disparities we see in society? While it's true that there are biological contrasts, such as the ability to bear children or average differences in body mass and testosterone levels, these are not valid rationales for unequal treatment. In earlier times, these physical differences led to a practical division of labor. Women typically engaged in child rearing while men undertook physically rigorous tasks. Physical strength was synonymous with survival and, by extension, leadership. Yet in our contemporary world, the value placed on brute strength has waned, overshadowed by the premium on intellectual and innovative capabilities which know no gender. Despite this shift in what society values, gender norms lag stubbornly behind, creating an environment where disregarding outdated expectations isn't as simple as an individual choice. We stitch our social fabric together, and from a young age we're draped in it, adopting, sometimes subconsciously, the roles traced out by long-standing customs. The author's childhood recollection of striving to become class captain epitomizes this indoctrinated bias. She earned the top score, rightly anticipating the leadership role only to have the title passed to a boy with a lower score. The implicit belief that a leader must be male was so ingrained that the need to articulate it didn't cross her teacher's mind. Such moments powerfully illustrate that traditional gender roles are relics of a bygone era, clinging to a rationale that's no longer relevant. The pressing task now is to recalibrate our norms to align with the present and future, one where women's aspirations and rights are as recognized and realized as those of men. It calls for a collective effort to redefine the normal, to forge a path where differences between men and women are acknowledged 
without perpetuating inequality. In crafting this new normal, we don't just pave the way for fairness, we enhance the human experience for all, encouraging every individual to flourish in their unique capacity. Part 5. Embracing Feminism, Envisioning a Society Redefined The task before us is clear. To integrate feminism into the very fabric of our society, necessitating a fundamental recalibration of our collective mindset and actions. The journey begins with dismantling the enduring myth that women need to emulate masculine traits to validate their competence. The author herself grappled with this dichotomy, contemplating whether to don a suit or skirt to project professionalism in her teaching role. This internal conflict spotlights the fallacy that femininity and authority are mutually exclusive. Recognizing her right to express both, she understood that it's not only how women view themselves that needs transformation, but also our broader perception of gender norms. Men, too, are shackled by societal expectations. They are often corralled into portraying toughness and emotional stoicism, a charade that can mask vulnerabilities common to all humans. Women are implicitly instructed to navigate these facades delicately to avoid bruising male egos, limiting their own expression of strength and suppressing their true feelings. The path to a society that embraces feminism must support men in casting aside these constrictions, permitting authenticity in place of forced bravado. For society to evolve, we must engage openly in dialogues about gender, actively seeking and addressing inequalities. This involves moving past the notion of gender blindness, where claims of not seeing gender are often a thin veil over ingrained biases. Recognizing gender is not the problem, ignoring the injustices it festers is. Moreover, we should hold on to the conviction that change is viable. Just as cultural mores have shifted in the past, they can and must transform again. It's just our culture can no longer be the refrain that excuses discrimination and disparity. Take, for example, the tale of the author's nieces, twins who, in a different era, under the Igbo culture, would have faced a terrible fate. Today, such a practice is inconceivable to the Igbo people. This dramatic cultural shift gives us hope that one day, perhaps a century hence, future generations will look back at our era's gender inequalities with the same disbelief. The message of we should all be feminists is one of a possibility, conviction, and a reimagining of the world. A world where the gender narrative is rewritten, not in the margins, but boldly across the pages of our global story. Final summary. At its heart, we should all be feminists, dispels the fog of misconception that has long enshrouded the concept of feminism. It signals an urgent reminder that the movement isn't about hostility towards men or aggressive overthrows. It's an unwavering stand for equity amidst a world still rife with disparity between the sexes. The book is a clarion call, emphasizing why feminism is as relevant and essential today as it ever was. It implores us to see beyond the outdated prejudices and stereotypes that hold back both women and men from a fairer, more coherent world. Feminists, as the author asserts, are individuals, regardless of gender, driven by the conviction that a society steeped in justice must extend this principle to every person without disparity. If the goal is a society where opportunities, respect, and dignity are not dictated by gender, then the message is unequivocal. Feminism must be embraced, integrated, and championed. We should all be feminists, not to wage war between genders, but to forge peace within them, peace that secures equality for all. Thank you for joining me today on this journey of learning and discovery as we explored the insights of another thought-provoking book in our growing library of knowledge. If you've enjoyed our time together, please take a moment to follow our podcast, give us a five-star rating, and share 20-minute books with other knowledge seekers. 
Your support truly means a lot. Don't forget to join me again in the next episode, where we will delve into another enriching book. Until then, happy reading and happy listening.